Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of The Daily Night. I'm bringing on Andrew Johnson, who works with me on Inside the Nights on Fan Nation, powered by Sports Illustrated. Andrew, thank you for joining the show once again. How are you doing today, my friend? Doing great, buddy. I'm just glad to be back. All right. All right. We're going to talk a little quarterback situation with UCF, mention some things with the transfer portal and how that impacts the position. But make no mistake, quarterback is the guy that's driving the bus for any football team at any level, any experience group, any level of talent. If you do not have quarterback play, you do not win big games. Mm -hmm. And UCF was in a flat out weird situation last year when Dylan got hurt. Mikey started the last nine games of the regular season, plus the bowl game against Florida. He has 10 games under his belt, but I'm here to say right off the bat, I consider this spring a competition. Yep. We have Plumley coming in from Ole Miss, and you also have Thomas Castellanos, and maybe Parker Navarro makes yep. his you – know, I don't know. Um, I, I will go ahead and say that until otherwise proven, I don't see Joey Gatewood as a viable option as a starter. I think he should move to tight end, period. And I know that he's probably not going to, but that's his decision. With that being stated, what are your opening thoughts in regards to the quarterback position for the UCF Knights? Yeah, I think the UCF community is really ex going to be excited about this spring because I think it's one of the most competitive QB battles that UCF seen in the last few years. You got three quarterbacks that could start potentially day one with Mikey Keene. As you stated, he went seven and three this year. He got kind of got through in the fire when DG got hurt. Yeah. But, hey, he had a solid true freshman season, and that's difficult for anyone to come in and just be able to go from day one. He had a solid season. You got the Thomas kid. He, You've seen him play in person. That He can he, he can throw the ball. He can use his legs. He can run that Gus Miles on offense. And, of course, what everyone excited about, the John Rice Plumley kid, he's a two-sport athlete. He's a speedster. He can run that run-pass option offense that Gus Malzahn likes. Because we know Gus Malzahn's coached. He was an offensive coordinator for Cam Newton, and he also was the head coach when Nick Marshall took him to the uh, national championship. So he can coach quarterbacks. So this is going to be an oh, interesting yeah. competition. The fact that – Nick Marshall led them in 2013 isn't anything less than just showing how great a play caller he can be when he has his kind of guy at quarterback. Yeah. Now, Gus is not very versatile with what he does at quarterback. There is no doubt about that. But he had to do that this past year with Mikey because Mikey's just not a runner. Mm -hmm. And he did it. And he also did it with Dylan, who was a deep ball thrower. So he's diversified now, which brings up the following question. Will we see – consistently multiple quarterbacks playing for the Knights, you know, against a team that's really good. Do you have a package for Plumley inside the five yard line and, and one that's inside the tw variations, different players that come in with him. It is very specific and strategic. And if Mikey's the starter, how often do you bring in somebody else? Do you let him play an entire drive? Yeah. These kinds of things, Gus is never going to divulge because he's, that's just his personality. He's always worried about what the other team is going to know. But in spring, there's no way around hiding it. Once the spring game is going on and people are there, you can't you can't hide if a guy like Plumlee has advanced as a passer. Because honestly, he didn't really play quarterback the last two years at Ole Miss. He played one year. And that's 2019. He was not a good passer. He was, was he a wide receiver. Yeah, he played receiver this yeah. past year, had like 19 catches okay. for uh, 201 yards, I believe. But he's fast as all get out. He had 210 yards rushing against that 2019 LSU defense, mm -hmm. which was the most of anybody that year. He makes guys miss, and then you will not run him down from behind. I'm sure there's a trick play waiting to happen with John in the lineup. That I will guarantee you. At some point, if he's not the quarterback, he might – go in motion. They might do something with, you know, a pitch to him and then he throws. Yeah. There's a million ways to do it. And Gus likes that stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking forward to that, but I'm not sure how they're going to do it other than just let it play out in spring mm -hmm. because they can't project how good guys are going to be in clutch moments and how accurate they're going to be. That's why you got to go through the reps. Assuming Plumlee earns the number one position, how close of the battle do you think it is between the Thomas kid and Mikey Keene for that number two spot? Well, 
that really depends on Thomas. He's the more talented mm-hmm. player. Uh, Thomas will be the most talented of the entire group. Okay. His arm strength is through the roof, and he could play running back at Florida State. He's that kind of gifted mm-hmm. athlete. Being stated as such, that doesn't mean that you know the playbook. Correct. Not knowing the playbook, I, there's a lot of kids across the country. I talk to people, and I'm like, why isn't so-and-so playing? It's always the same. He doesn't know the playbook. Yeah. The kid in Gainesville, the super talented kid, didn't didn't knock out the playbook. That's why he didn't play much this past year. Even though he's Florida's best athlete, he's 6'4", 235, and running away from guys. It's ridiculous. But you have to make post-snap reads. It is annoying. It is tedious. It is a lot of hours. Do it anyway, or else you're never going to make it in the NFL. And, That's and simple you, as it gets. You've seen him in person. I've seen some people talking on Twitter. He's about 5'10", 5'11"-ish. Do you think his size will have any, you know, any – any bad for him coming into this season for Thomas? Castellanos is used to being just, a, you know, a 5'11 kid. Yeah. It's not really that big a deal, and he's always played in the shotgun. The one thing I will say about him, he has a really good array of different arm angles that he'll mm-hmm. throw at. There was a play I happened to be on the left sideline of the game I went to when they played Warner Robins, which won 5A again. They were the only team to beat him. He got flushed to his left, did everything wrong, technically. Running to his left, off one arm, side-armed, and threw a back shoulder fade 30 yards down the field right on the money. Just natural arm strength. You cannot teach it, but every single thing he did is what you would say, no, no, no. He just has the physical ability. In plays like that, just show, because he had a guy kind of close to him, he has a gift for just figuring it out in the moment. That'll get you in trouble more often as you go up in levels because guys will get deflections, but he'll also learn from it. I expect him to be turnover heavy this first year that he starts. Why? Because almost every quarterback is that way when they go on to college from high school. All of a sudden, those windows that are like this are like this. Are closing. That's It's just math. So Thomas is probably going to have a pick six somewhere early in his career, and people are going to be down on him. By his junior year, he'll be a guy – that throws for like 2,600 yards and runs for 850. Mm, 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 you know what I mean? It's just – it is a long process. And he's, he's, per- he's kind of like that perfect fit for that Gus Miles on offense, I feel like. Long term, there's – they really couldn't have picked it up off a computer screen any better mm. other than to make him taller. And that – you know, it is what it is. But like yeah. from a physical stature standpoint, Thomas like in his hips and upper legs – just from the spring last year when I saw him to now, he's a guy that was, shall we say, in the weight room a lot. Mm. He put on weight in his hamstrings and his hips, and he's got more power. And there were a few plays when guys that were really big, 280-pound guys or bigger, were in front of him. Mm. He would either make the miss, but sometimes they'd get an arm out there and grab at him, and he could pull off of that. Mm. He's He's very gifted strength wise as yeah. well. He's not your typical quarterback. He can break tackles literally mm. like a running back. And that's why I mentioned like Florida state would have loved to have had him on their roster. Florida state, Clemson, South Carolina, Georgia, a bunch of schools wanted him either receiver, running back or corner. Mm. I mean, those are all schools, you know, it's, they get guys that are difference makers there. So for them to recruit him like that gives a, a pretty good example of his physical talent. Okay, so he plays stronger and faster than he looks, but he has oh, absolutely he has the tangibles. Oh yeah, yeah. And I again, I didn't realize how big he was until I saw him. Mm. Uh, it's probably I think it was October, but that's why you have to go to the games. The, the film is just not the same, and uh, it was a long drive, but it, it was fun and I enjoyed it. And I'm glad I did because it gives me a better perspective. Because they they'll need to work on his upper body, his his trunk mm-hmm. and everything, but arm strength is already there. He can power through a tackle. Now it's more about above the shoulders mm. mentally. Does he learn the playbook? Yeah. Gus doesn't know. Nobody knows the answer to that, but you could also do a package for Castellanos mm-hmm. if he, for whatever reason, he struggles with the playbook and all this. And those things, you know, there's a You're lot. The ball. There's a lot of things there. If they do that, keep it simple. You know, if nothing else, you're grinding out the clock and keeping your defense on the sideline. Uh, UCF, I will be shocked if they're not in the top two 
in the American Athletic Conference this next year in rushing because oh, yeah. of Thomas and, and I mean and the running back group. Oh man. Oh yeah. I mean, there, there's you know, and they run jet sweeps with O'Keefe, yeah. etc. All those things will help the actual passing game, regardless of which guy is actually behind center trying to throw it. So it is a conundrum to face UCF because they can come out in the same personnel package and run two or three different things because yeah. now they're starting to get more athletes, etc. getting Hudson at receiver. They've yeah. got the boundary guy. You're looking at a different kind of offense now because if you put eight in the box, you, you really can against the spread and jump. But even if you put seven in the box, yeah. you're going single coverage against three guys that have the ability to at minimum – go to the NFL combine and, and try to be an NFL free agent. I think at least two of them, if not all three will end up being drafted. Mm-hmm. So it, there's all kinds of dynamics that play together. And that's why football is the ultimate team sport. Now the, we have to talk about them because it's the quarterback position, but the wild card at this position who seems to get the five yard personnel package is Parker Navarro. Yeah. What, what do you think his chances are? Do you think he transfers out or do you think he stays to try to get that, you know, those packages that he got last year? My guess is he goes through spring and just sees how it plays out. Okay. If he doesn't win out that spot, he'll transfer. Yeah. That's just how it, I mean, I'll call it right now. I will be shot. If he wants to stay more power to him. I think the chances of him beating out Castellanos beyond this next season are about the chances of me dunking on Shaquille O'Neal. But, uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm a 5'10", five, ten, five, ten white guy. It's 48 years old. It's not happening. But mm. uh, the bottom line is still the same. He's got a moxie to him. Yeah. He's a very intelligent runner, good steps, patience. When they first put him in there, I remember I was, I was in the booth. You were up there, and I'm like, yeah. what are they doing? And he hey. scored, and then he did it again. Yeah, but every time again. he got down there, he would score. Yeah, I mean, he is mentally very prepared for what he needs to do. But the, the ultimate thing with the quarterback – and you look at the teams over the last, really since 2015 or so, if you can't throw the ball for 300 yards against top competition, you will never sniff the college football playoffs. Mm-hmm. And that's right after Malzahn had that great season in 13. Yeah. Nick Marshall was not a passer. But a lot of people don't know this. Marshall started out his college career at Georgia Cornerback. at corner. That's what kind of, I mean, think about kind of kids that Georgia gets. Yes, sir. He didn't work out there. Went to Juco for a year. Went, then yeah. went to play for Gus, and they put him at quarterback. Yeah. Everybody's like, who's that? Obviously, it worked out pretty well. The only question with a guy like that, can they take the pounding? Nick was not a real thick guy, but he was wiry strong. Mm-hmm. That would always worry me. Castellanos is bigger. He's 195, 198, somewhere in that range. I think UCF has got the ability now. I mean, you got Gatewood, you got Navarro, you got Castellanos, you got Plumley, and you got Mike again. I mean, I've never seen a depth chart so convoluted. Competitive, too. Oh, yeah. I, I One, if not two of those guys will leave within the next 12 months. That's the conservative answer. And, and I'm not exactly jumping out through hoops here to say that, but at the same time, they need – a guy to step forward. It, when you set your game plan through one player, Andrew, I mean, just, just from talking to coaches around the country over the last 25 years, they want consistency. Mm. Quarterback guys, they want things to be in a box. This is what Johnny does. And since we're playing a team that takes away the inside zone or whatever, we adjust a little bit here or there to compensate. But when you don't really know who your quarterback's going to be week to week, and then you play like a really good front seven that's going to stuff the run and you know you can't truly move the ball like you normally do? Well, we don't know who our quarterback's going to be, so how do we plan the passing attack? That's when you get smoked. UCF needs a definitive number one that can throw the football. Just having a Nick Marshall type, even with Gus, is not going to work anymore because when you play a team, they got Georgia Tech and Louisville. And, I mean, Georgia Tech's terrible, but they still have some power five players that are going to run over you. I mean, they, they were really bad at the end of this last year. Their last two games, they got outscored 100 to nothing. Ooh. Literally, 55 to nothing to Notre Dame, 45 to nothing to Georgia, and both of them could have scored more, literally. Uh, I think the head coach at Georgia Tech is going to get canned. He's just not very good. Collins, but, I believe it's Collins. What's against yeah, Collins? Uh, yeah. Yeah, but, I mean, that's a terrible job. They have high academic standards, and they're trying to compete against Georgia. Good luck. I mean, it's, it's just a terrible job. But – 
They're coming down to the bounce house and it's an FBS program. They're going to have some size. Yep. You need to be able to run the ball on them and pass it. Just doing one or the other against power five opponents generally does not work out very well for any school, UCF included. So in my opinion, they'll go the safe route to start this yep. next season. Keen will start. But at some point, and I don't know what game it will be, there will be a moment when the packages start. They may not do it in game one if they've got one of those intro games, if you know what I mean, the basic team they can beat up on because they want to hide their their hand. But once we get against an opponent, you know, whether it's Louisville or whatever, Cunningham, by the way, is coming back. Cunningham, that's going to be that's he's he's, well, he's a dark horse for the Heisman because we he ever consistently figures out passing. He's got everything right. else. Right. We're talking about an opportunity for UCF to show some of these kids which ones are there and who plays well in practice and, of course, who stays healthy. Yeah. And, and and just for those who are wondering, I, I'm going to go against Brian here, and I'm going to say I think Plumley will have a good spring game. And okay. he offers Malzone more. I think he gives Malzone more in this offense, especially with the wide receiver group that we got. So I think they'll they'll start with him. And Mikey will be number two just because that experience and the season he had last year, just being thrown in as a true freshman. And Thomas, of course, they'll have packages for him. Like you said, even if he doesn't throw the ball, they can give that kid the ball, get it in his hands. He can he can run the ball. So that's that's just my predictions. That, that could be. But Plumlee was moved to receiver, in my opinion, for a reason. For, okay. That's – and I watched him throw the ball against LSU in that game two years ago. I, again, he ran for 210. Yeah. He couldn't throw it in the ocean if he was swimming in it. Man. That's the thing. Like, if if he could throw consistently, he'd have won the Heisman this year in turn pro. Mm. He's a sub 4 4 guy in the 40, legitimately. Like, he can See. smoke it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just straight up hit it on a line, and he has the ability to stop and start some. He's not a total jitterbug, per se, but he'll make the first guy miss, and then it's adios. You're not going to get him from behind. Man, so, him and Johnny he figures Rich out quarterback play, like throwing the ball, look out. Look out. Oh, look out. Him and Johnny Richardson back there, man. That's oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right now. Kind of like that KZ kind of like, you know, Greg McRae or Otis Anderson. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. Right now, that fake, making the defensive end commit to A or B. You know, it same thing with Johnny. If Johnny gets his first step in the ground and he's got a good base and nobody hitting him and he can really hit it, DN stays outside and he can go up that gap. It can be seventy five to the house first play in the game. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They can do all kinds of things. By the way, I think they'll play him and Isaiah next year a little bit more. I, I think. I mean, you got to get Johnny on the. He averaged over seven yards a carry, which will help. I mean, that's, that's a lot. He had more rushing yards with far fewer carries than Bowser, yeah. people that don't know. So just, he is just, just for the people that's watching and wondering, and I know we talked about the running back group already, but how many carries do you think the Jordan McDonald kid has? That, I, I didn't know he was that big. But look yeah, at him. He's, 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 he's a grown man. I, I went and met Jordan. I've seen him twice. I saw him at Under Armour in March. Then I saw him right before the state championship. Uh, he's 220 or something like that. He's he's just redefined his body. He's just naturally a big kid. Man. Real nice guy, by the way. Yeah. Um, people that get to meet him will enjoy. He's good personality. I don't I don't think people will realize it because like he got seven A player of the year or something like that yeah. in Georgia. Like Travis Hunter was the best player in the country, but he missed yeah. quite a bit of time. I mean, if Travis would have played the whole year, he'd have got yeah. it. Yeah. This kid got Player of the year in Georgia. I mean, that's a big deal, man. Georgia, yeah, I mean, Georgia's beautiful. as good as it gets for high school football in you this country. Georgia. It's not unlikely that he, he finds a role in a niche, but there's a log jam that we talked about. <laughs> he may have to kind of just wait his turn till next year because yeah. yeah, Bowser will leave. That opens the door. But as they say, you know, if you make your mark and he plays well against one of those so called lesser teams, maybe he moves himself up. That's why you compete every day in practice, just like a quarterback. So yeah, I think Mark Anthony and R Richards will be the you know the dark or the guy. I feel like he's a really good back that can give you blocking, receiving, and running the ball. So I think they'll utilize him. I'll try to get him the ball a lot more next season. Well, that's part of it with with young quarterbacks and maybe not the most active. If if it's not keen in the lineup, 
throwing to the backs, doing screens, shovel passes, little things like that, that running back room becomes even more important. And then finally, who can block? Pass protection for a running back at the college level, paramount. If you cannot do it, you'll be standing right there next to Gus. And guess what? Sure. He's not getting any carries either. So sure. you, you, you have to be able to pass block. That'll be Jordan McDonald's biggest task beyond learning the playbook. Obviously, every freshman has to do that. Can you pass block? Yeah. It, you know, they're not in a position because they don't even know who the quarterback's definitely going to be to nope. lose one of them. Yeah. The running back room has to be very, very confident in their, what they're doing, execute it, just be vigilant overall. Because if not, I mean, what happened to Dylan changed the season. If yeah. Dylan plays all the way through, they probably win nine, if not 10 games in the regular season. It's just true. Yeah. You can't lose your starting quarterback. It just changes everything. Uh, there have been a few teams in the history of college and pro football do that and win a championship. That's the anomaly, not the rule. UCF's no different. So once they establish that depth chart, and, and who knows when Gus will announce He'll probably announce it about 12 seconds before kickoff, <laughs> is my guess. Again, he does not like giving information about depth charts and all that. He just doesn't. I think we've seen that in the press conferences this year. Uh, that is correct. Um, but at the same time, quarterback, I mean, he may not really know. Yeah, until they go at until they actually yeah. compete and see he sees all of them and gets film on them. See the relationship they have with Ryan and Jalen, and then they'll go from there. Well, it's interesting because you get 15 practices in spring ball per NCAA rules. Okay. How do you rotate four or yeah. five guys? Man, get and those put reps. all your eyes on it. I mean, they go watch the film afterwards, but you need to be able to coach between each rep. They've got to, I'd say, by practice five or six, because mm. usually the middle scrimmage in spring and fall is the key one. This is the one where you go live, nobody gets to go to it. Yeah. You go live and you just see, okay, who does or does not make the play, does makes the right read, running out the fake, all the little things that coaches bitch and harp about. Yeah. They script it, what the play they know. I mean, it's easy. So if you make an error, that is also a note they take. Everything you do, whether it's Alabama or New Mexico State, that middle – scrimmage that almost it's you know every Saturday they scrimmage that's pretty much how all the schools do it if you do well then you could move up the depth chart live competition I'm also curious will they allow the quarterbacks to get hit at all because they run the ball I, I don't know how they're going to do that yeah. uh, Mikey doesn't really need it he's not a runner so I, I'd imagine they wouldn't allow him to be hit but probably you need to see you know because I mean that guy man as you noted when he hits the corner you better have a definitive yeah. angle or it's six. He Ask LSU. He ran for 210 yards in one football game against arguably the greatest team in college football history. He smoked it. So yeah. you yeah, have to be ready to have all your packages and organize all that so you can see who's the best. But I'm not sure there's going to be a definitive answer in the spring yeah. because that's a lot of guys. Yeah. I got. I think I got one more question for you about Mikey Keene. How – how much control do you think he had of the offense? Because I know Gus kind of limited the playbook for him. But how much of a command and, and of a leader do you think those guys looked at to Mikey Keene to lead the offense? If you'd asked me that question anything before about game nine, I would have laughed out loud because he was just trying to make it work. Yes, sir. There were too many moments, and we talked about it in the booth, where he waited for a receipt. Like We could see the whole field. When you're on TV, you can't see diddly about the cover. That's the thing that sucks about TV. I can see the secondary or then cover two, then cover four, then cover six with man on the backside. You know, you can't see anything on TV. It's just where the, where's the ball at? And they follow the quarterback. Yep. Well, there were a couple of plays where the guy was just playing open, nobody, and he didn't pull the trigger. Nope. Now I remember the one time Gus lit into him on the sidelines and it was a bust of coverage. Brandon ran a deep dig across the middle, 15 yards, and nobody within 5, 10 yards of it didn't throw it, got set. Uh, no. But then after that, he kind of took a step forward, and he just felt more confident. You have to throw guys open. So I would say around game 10, all the way through the, the last four games, it was a little different. And he didn't still always have great numbers because he doesn't have a power arm and all that. He has to throw it, use timing and everything. But he made some accurate throws down the field, and that's 
That's the key here. That pass that he threw to O'Keefe, the bomb, where he threw up the deuces. Yeah. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. Yeah. If you can hit one of those a game and you've got Isaiah Bowser next to you, yeah. you're pulling a safety out of the box, or you, you spread out the line, whatever it is, and you give Bowser an extra step, just that one throw changes your offense there after because they, they just don't want to get beat for a 60-yard touchdown. And UCF is going to be really fast. Again, running back with Johnny and then all three of the receivers, they're going to have a chance to make more deep shots. So here, here's a little statistical forefront question. How many touchdowns do the folks out there think UCF will throw next year? Mm. But here's a more important one. How many will be 40 yards or more? It'll increase. I guarantee it. Yeah. Because if Jalen plays or Keith plays and Hudson, they all play at least 10 games. I mean, they could get banged up a little bit. There's going to be a lot of fireworks. A third and seven could be just like a third and one because if you're playing cover one against one of those guys and you don't get a good bump, you know what I mean? He's You can yeah. miss a little bit because they're so open. They're five yards ahead of the DB. Speed. That's speed. Speed kills. Yeah, absolutely. And I, that's the other reason I like Keen because he has a little at least some rapport with some of the receivers other than Hudson already. Yes. That's a big advantage. That experience. So, oh, yeah. It's gonna be big, but I think you made I think you made a good point. I think up to game nine ish, I think Mikey Keen was just trying to be a game manager. He was just cool. managing the game, didn't want to make a mistake. I feel like Plumlee is gonna be the guy to make those plays that you didn't know he could make or get around that defensive end and rush for 30, 40 yards. I think he just offers that big play to Gus Malzon. And the kind of like Mikey Keen is just a just run your offense and, and and do good and then okay. I don't know. I, I just felt like he was know, a game manager. It, it's interesting that you mentioned that. It's still for him is, is playbook. Yeah, if Plumlee playbook. improves as a passer a little yeah. bit and he, for whatever reason, picks up the playbook, I have no idea if he will or not. Yeah. He could start pretty quick. He may even start game one. Yeah. But that playbook is the one thing I can watch film all day. It's worthless. Yeah. You got to know the playbook. And, and the, Gus will not know. The offensive court, you know, Lindsay will not know. They just have to wait. Yeah. There is no magic elixir for making a kid study and actually grasp an offensive playbook. Yeah. So for, for those who are watching, just put your predictions down below. Who do you think will start and who do you think will be the number two guy? And do you think we'll lose a guy? I think we might lose Parker or we're going to lose Brito. We'll lose or Joe, maybe even Joey. So we might lose three guys. Two things. Number one, we will lose at least one. And quite frankly, I don't care. We're in the transfer portal era. Kids don't have any loyalty to the logo. No, And even if I'm nice to them and, and talk to them at the press, your number, yeah. the way you're treating schools now, now the schools treat, there is no loyalty. Business. If you, oh, 100%. If you want to transfer, the transfer portal is 365 days a year. With that being stated, adios. You didn't win. Pack your bags if that's what you want to do. If you don't want to just be a student, yeah. Best of luck to you. Down, yeah, I mean, next man up. Yeah, next. Just talked up. about that a lot. It's something that like national title game. Yeah. Do you think Alabama loses if Jamison Williams plays the whole game? I sure as heck don't. No, nah. but that's just part of it. You have to play the next guy. Yeah. UCF will probably have some quote unquote separation at the quarterback position this next season. Who's it going to be? When's it going to happen? I have no idea. The injury bug that, you know, like, again, Gus is not going to hand out information cards on, well, it's not in the injury report, but here's this information. So-and-so at quarterback's got a shin bruise and he's a little gimpy. We're not going to run him as, you know what I mean? It's just, that's just not how it works. He doesn't do that. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. He'll lie through his teeth if he had yeah. to. I mean, he might say, yeah, he's got it. He's next. That's just what coaches do. They're not going to tell the opponent. Coach What's beats. going on? Because they got GAs watching your press conferences. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. So you have to make sure that you do your due diligence and just fit it. They might change quarterbacks a little bit based on their opponent. That's not, that's something Gus has done yeah. within games. If a guy gets like five or ten plays, if it's a team that's weak against the run, it'll rotate. Guy, and that guy can like Plumley. If they go up against a team that's you know like Twain this year had a really good game against UCF, but overall defensively couldn't stop the run. Maybe Plumley plays more yeah. against that opponent. Yeah, that's right. 
that's a part of the, the equation. Every game can be different. Like we said in the beginning, this is going to be unique and interesting with the quarterback competition going into this season. You got three guys that can legitimately oh. play and start day one. So, oh. man, we can go oh. all day. I feel like we can go all day with this quarterback competition. It's it, it really is fascinating because without going to spring practices, I just don't have any insight. Mm-hmm. When I scout, like I'm going to a seven-on-seven seven tournament tomorrow. It starts tomorrow for me, and it will run through mid-June. Every weekend, I'll be at a seven-on-seven seven tournament for six months. And it's, it gets a little monotonous, but there's something different about seeing a kid's huddle highlight or me watching him do a workout, like I was in Lake Wales the other night watching kids work out, as opposed to having a corner in your face playing bump coverage. Mm. That's a true Florida kid, if you know what I mean. That's yeah. not afraid to tell you what he thinks of your mama. A dog. Yeah, yeah, and then go out and try to beat him. Mm. You have to see kids live. And since we're absolutely taken out of that equation, only thing I can do is project. Yeah, Gus is not going to show us any practice. I guarantee you that. Anytime we're allowed in, they're going to be doing something other than throwing the football around. I guarantee you that. So, yeah, it's just it's a all projections. Right now, it's just all projections. Hundred percent, hundred percent. So. All right, buddy. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you very much, everybody. Please like and subscribe. Uh, we got. Hopefully, a little more transfer portal news will be popping up here soon. Uh, it's supposedly today, but you know how it is with kids uh, and young men. I, just because I've been told something doesn't anybody mean on going. the watch. Anybody on the watch for you right now? Uh, there's a few, but I'll, I'll let okay. them do their. Okay, yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll, we'll let them wait for that. And just because what I've been told doesn't mean they might change their mind five minutes from now. That's too. Okay. That's, in the transfer portal, we know how it can get. Yeah, I, there's been many times I've had a story written, or one of my buddies had a story written with quotes. Wow. The kid goes to the podium, picks another school. Flip flop. I've Man. watched it happen. Man. So I know better than to say anything. I let them announce publicly, then I publish my article. I've got two articles ready to roll. Will I even get a publish either one of them? We don't know yet. I have no idea. So it's it's part of the game of. Football and football recruiting. It's a little more dramatic and unlike, but I don't get to dictate that. So it is what it is. So for Andrew Johnson, I'm Brian Smith. Everybody have a great day. Thank you much.